record this for a third time. Apparently my camera's fucking up, so I gotta make this a quick, quick shoot. I'm heading to too many games. Um, I updated my Xbox exclusive list. Uh, it's 13 to go, so pretty close. Uh, Sega Saturn Model 1, preferably, is what I'm looking for, just the console itself, or the Model 2 would be acceptable if it's a good price. And, um, what the hell? Only in Maryland. <laughs> um, and then uh, I'm look I updated my Wii U completion list. I don't know if I'm actually doing that still. If I can get them at an incredibly cheap price, like a couple dollars a piece, then yes. Uh, but probably not since that won't happen. So much like everybody else, I think I might give up on the Wii U. But we'll see. So let's see. Uh, I think I know Dan and the guys from Rebel Gaming Club are going to be there. So hopefully I can run into them. And uh, we'll see what goes on and what gets purchased. So stay tuned for that. Made it. I didn't think I was going to make it. I, I thought I got lost for a second, but I finally made it. All right, so while I was walking around the floor of uh, Too Many Games, I was glancing around at random uh, little vendors and stuff. So this vendor happened to be Stone Age Gamer, which is a website if you're not familiar with it. You can Google it, figure out what they do. They mainly make uh, the best ever drives. Or I don't know if they're the best, but the, they're one of the American companies that does it. Um, so I believe they're the first ones making a Neo Geo AES EverDrive and there it was on display and you could actually buy it so prior to this coming out collecting for any Neo Geo system is not cheap just the system alone is 200 to 400 I think and that's just with one controller another controller is going to probably run you 80 to 150 I think I, I honestly don't know but now that these are coming out I would honestly say now's the time to get a Neo Geo AES before they rise in price I'm kind of debating on getting one shortly. But here's the bad part that I'm going to tell you. And uh, I'll explain it further in a second. The price of this EverDrive for this is $500. That seems pretty heavy. But when you consider Metal Slug X, which I think is 6 or 7, I'm not honestly sure, that's like a $600 game alone. So it's really not that bad in the grand scheme of things if you want to have the entire collection of Neo Geo AES on one cartridge and you're not going to have to pay a hundred grand to be able to play the full library of the Neo Geo AES so for about eight hundred dollars give or take you could have yourself a Neo Geo AES with the full library all in all that's really not that bad of a price and that's kind of an alleyway I might go down to try to enjoy some of these Neo Geo games. Uh, I've always wanted one. Surprisingly enough, I did actually know about the Neo Geo way back in the day. I don't remember who had it in my life, but I remember seeing it at some house, wherever I was when I was a really young kid. So I did know about it when I was younger, but I, you know, back then, you know, it was expensive and this and that. So, but either way, um, that is something to keep an eye out on, Stone Age Gamer, uh, Neo Geo AES EverDrive. So keep an eye out for that. And the reason that they're so expensive is because if you've ever looked inside of a uh, AES PCB, let alone they're massive. I mean, they're the size of, I don't know, like two or three Game Boys next to each other in thickness. And then there's basically two PCBs, or might even be three, that go into the actual um, cartridge slot. And I don't, I'm not an engineer, electronic engineer, so I don't know all the ins and outs of this and that. But there's like capacitors and uh, CMOSs and all sorts of shit that goes into making that cartridge. And, um, you know, so that's why they're expensive. Um, it's, it's definitely something that I could foresee being um, hard to come by because I don't know how many they're going to make. So this is why I'm letting you know about these. I've known about them for a few months, but I just happened to see it out of the corner of my eye at the... Uh, too many games conventions. So I figured I would bring that uh, point up to you guys. So I'm not sure if you can actually see it, but the third game on the top row from the left is Little Samson for 1,500 shekels.
All right, so all in all, I had fun at Too Many Games. That's the first gaming convention I've ever been to. Um, the few things that I didn't really enjoy about it, and I'll go over that with you, it was my first time going. I went by myself, so that's probably not the best way to enjoy it. I really wish Nico could have come with me, but like I said, he's um, he's working up in Maine right now for the summer. Um, so that's one thing that I didn't really enjoy about it. Walking around by myself wasn't particularly too fun, but it is what it is. Uh, the second thing that really irritated me was all the prices were not just eBay prices. They were beyond eBay prices. They were 20, 30, 40 percent higher than eBay prices on all this shit. That's why I didn't even pick up that much stuff. Because they just didn't even want to give them money because they were asking far too much for everything they were trying to sell. Uh, the last stop that I made in, in here before I left, I, I found this nice... They had to have had at least a third of the N64 library in front of me. So I was getting all excited, looking at them all, and I was just like, all right, so I need some cheaper games. I don't really need any more first-party titles for the 64. I've got them all. You know, uh, Chameleon Twist 1 and 2, um, you know, like Rampage 2, which is more of a pricey game, which I know, and just stuff like that, mid-range price stuff. And they just wanted far too much money for everything. And it's just like, dude, how are you going to sell shit if you're not even going to, like be at eBay prices or less. Like, you brought all your games to a convention to sell them because they're not selling well on the Internet. You need to actually lower your prices, even if it was just a couple bucks. There's three people to the left of me and, like, four or five to the right of me at this one stand. This one guy asked for something that was $22. He, just, he goes, would you take 20 And they're like, nope. And, like, yeah, I get it. The 2 bucks probably wouldn't hurt the guy to buy it. But at the same time, would two bucks really hurt them to sell it for twenty? It just it was it was kind of ridiculous, and the prices were just too much. And I don't know. I guess maybe I just wasn't prepared for that, being at never going to conventions before. But I just thought the prices weren't really right. Um, you know, I found that Saturn for sixty-five, and um, well, I guess you'll see that later in the video. <laughs> but so that was like the one good deal I got at the convention. But uh, other than that, you know, there just wasn't. You know, it just wasn't enjoyable to me. I don't know if I'll ever go back. I, I called Nico immediately when I got home, talked to him about it and this and that. And I just kind of told him, I was just like, look, it was kind of disappointing, to be honest, because he wanted to know how it was. And, uh, you know, it just I told him, I was like, I'll go one more time with you, and, you know, we might enjoy it next year. But, and, you know, it was cool walking into the arcade section that they had, playing a couple of games and this and that. But overall, I just wasn't that impressed. It was so crowded, so overpacked, and just... There was just too many people bumping into each other and kids, you know, complaining about prices and this and that and just and just a lot, lots of kids complaining about prices and oh my god, Zelda Ocarina of Time's forty dollars, Super Mario sixty four is thirty forty dollars. I can't afford that. That's the going rate. That's been the going rate for over a decade. So get over it. I mean that that hasn't increased in price. That's that's been the rate for that for ten to fifteen years, and it's always going to be. There's not a shortage of those copies. It's just an in demand game. And don't even get me started on the price of Saturn games at this place. They were just astronomical. Like Road Rash, that's like a twenty, thirty dollar game. Dude wanted like fifty bucks for it. Um, you know, Rampage. I seen that for like a hundred and twenty for the Saturn. I seen just all sorts of like cheap to mid-range titles that are twenty to like sixty dollars. Saw them all for like double the price. Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. I seen that for a hundred and seventy dollars there. Like what? I mean, I'm not exaggerating when I tell you all these prices. They really were just that ridiculous. I I can't state that enough. Um, I don't know. Maybe I just had like a sour experience, but it just wasn't for me really, to be honest with you. They just, too many people bumping into each other. The convention just, it was so packly tight, tightly packed. And just, they had like a lot of tables set up for like Pokemon battles and magic battles and this and stuff. That's cool and all, but like, Nobody was over there. There maybe was 30 or 40 people over there, and there could have sat like 500 people there. They could have, you know, reduced those tables down a little bit and had more vendors spread out over there so that it wasn't so packed. And it just it just wasn't well put together. And I just, overall, I didn't really have a good experience there, and I, I, I probably won't go back unless Nico ever wants to go back. And that's just kind of how I feel about it. I just wanted to let that be known. I just I just really didn't enjoy it, to be honest. I really didn't. And funny enough, just when I thought my channel was so small that, like, nobody would recognize me or, like, say anything about me, sure enough, uh, I hear these two kids, they're probably late teens, maybe early 20s, you know, a, a little younger than me, but not, like, a lot younger than me, but, um, 
complaining about Wii U prices. And then I hear one of them go, yeah, that that game collector guy did that Wii U guide and all the prices shot up. And I just broke my neck back and I was just like, wait, do they know that's me? Or are they just saying that because they're saying that? And I just thought it was kind of funny because that's the only video that I have that actually has a lot of views on it. And I doubt they knew it was me because that was still before I was putting myself into the videos. And that was actually literally my second or third video I ever did. So it was almost a year ago. But um, it was kind of funny. And then when I went to another stand, there was a person who actually did recognize me. And they were looking at the Wii U games. And then they started picking through them real quick because they were like, oh, God, he's going to take them all. <laughs> I just started cracking up because I was just like, God damn it. I don't even have a big channel. And I guess people know that I'm like a Wii U collector. So I guess either that or I happen to run into run into two people that like have stumbled upon my channel at some point in time. But I thought that was kind of funny and something you guys would enjoy hearing. Entry is complete without Taco Bell. So what's going on, guys? Uh, back to do the pickups from too many games and this week's pickups one of the pickups which was I think it was no, I don't remember which one I showed you in the Xbox video so I don't want to ruin it if it's a different one so I'll show in the pickups in a second so at too many games I brought my 3DS just to spot pass with people I always kind of enjoyed that just seeing like what states people are from that I'm running into it's just a stupid little distraction and it, it was a cool little novel idea that Nintendo threw in. I really think that they should throw it in with the Switch, as well as Mi Plaza, and um, you know all those other things. I really think that that could help the Switch out a little bit. Definitely Spot Pass though, because it's just a cool little thing, and all the little mini games that are with the Spot Pass and the Mies and all that stuff. Um, so I haven't actually started up. Ooh, better turn that music off before Nintendo strikes me. Um, so I'm about to start up Mi Plaza here in a second. I don't know how many it is yet, so I figure we may as well make a fun little game out of it. Um, I'm going to guess, I would say there's probably, while I was there at Too Many Games, there's probably at least anywhere from five to 800 people there. So I'm going to say at least 44 of them had um, Spot Pass on, or Street Pass, I'm sorry. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and fire that up. Uh, it needs an update. Don't tell me it didn't Street Pass because it needs an update. Are you fucking kidding me? Let's just try to launch it anyway. So I'm going to see what that says once we get through some of these pickups. So I picked up 164 game. Like I said, I occasionally pick these up. I've been looking for this game for a little while. Uh, this is actually a Take-Two game, which uh, this game was uh, made by Rockstar before they were actually Rockstar, and that is uh, Space Station Silicon Valley. Uh, I hate to quote Metal Jesus by saying this, but I would grab this now before the price goes up. Uh, this is about a $20 game. I paid 20 bucks for it. Uh, it's in really good shape. This is a really cool, unique game. Apparently there's a, there's a few glitches and stuff in this game that they're not game-breaking, but definitely kind of ruined the game at some points. But i um, pretty excited to grab that. That was the last of the... I think uh, they also made Blast Corpse. That was... I think that was... That was either Rare or Rockstar before they were Rockstar. I can't remember. But Rockstar made two or three games for the N64 before they were Rockstar. Can't remember off the top of my head what they were, but so this is the 164 game. Uh, man, it's making me update it. Well, we'll see how if it actually works, and let me sh show you what the games were. Um, all right, so what I want to show next. So the main things that I was going for at too many games were um, this one, which I'm gonna show you now, which I just now realized. It kind of smells like cigarettes, which kind of sucks. But uh, one thing that I wanted to note was the one vendor that I went to had, um, you'll see what was in this in a second, had this sweet, this is a little sealable, resealable bag, but it's kind of cool. It's got like little uh, controllers and consoles and cartridges on there and stuff. I thought that was kind of cool. So that's what my uh, Sega Saturn Model 1 controller came in. This is going to need a good bit of a cleaning. It's kind of dusty and grimy and gross. But that goes along with, that came in the bag with the AV cord, or the power cord. And the AV cord, he actually gave me a third party one by, um, Toma, or Tomi. Um, being that I'm part of the RGB Master Race uh, uh, for consoles, I have the Frame Meister, the XRGB Mike and Saw Frame Meister uh, composite. Just doesn't do it for me. RF is completely trash. 
Uh, I packed my frame meister up because I'm moving soon, so I wanted to test the system out and whatnot, but uh, AV cables are terrible. But I can tell you what, this signal on this cable looks even worse than like an OEM um, Sega cable for the Saturn. But um, So whatever. I was trying to get this out of him for 50 He sold the, the whole kit to me for 65 Like I said in another video, I really just wanted the console, but he ended up giving me it for 65 with all the other shit, so... Honestly, I'll probably just throw these cables away. Um, so here's the Sega Saturn Model 1. It's in pretty good shape. The main things that I look for when I buy a console are if the actual logos are in good shape. Because all this other plastic stuff can be, uh, re can be fixed by me. And after this video, you will notice that I'll be uploading another video, which will be a Sega Saturn slash any console restoration video. I've been wanting to do one of those for a while, so... After you watch this video, go ahead and watch that video. Um, it'll be, you know, I'll be cracking this open and really just giving a good cleaning. But you can apply these techniques to any console. And if you guys enjoy the idea of that, I can do it with any other console you'd like to see me do that with. Because I tell you what, the consoles that I have all look pristine that are not actually, you know, mine personally. They're like secondhand, like this one. I make them all look great. Um, and I'll show you a few tips and tricks on how to go ahead and, you know, restore some of these systems. Uh, some of the stickers on the bottom are a little coming off, but they're still in relatively good shape. It's got all the rubber feet and stuff. Okay, resetting that. So that was that. And uh, let's see. All right, so I'm doing the original Xbox exclusive set. I think I needed 21 to 19, somewhere in that ballpark before this week started. Um, so these are from Too Many Games right here, this stack. So we got Trophy Hunter 2007. Complete. It's Bass Pro Shop Trophy Hunter 2007. Complete. Paid seven bucks for that. It's pretty uncommon. I'm not going to say rare, but definitely uncommon. This one is the game that I was referring to in RGT 85's Xbox video, and that is Fatal Frame 2 Director's Cut. So it is complete. Uh, nice crispy manual. The discs discs are all good on all these games, and the manuals are all good too. But this has the dreaded sun fade on the top, where it's blue. Plus that corner is missing off the, the insert. So I kind of want to rebuy another one and Frankenstein them together and make a better copy and then get rid of this insert. But it'll do for now. Um, paid 15 bucks for this, so you can't beat that. Uh, these are actually, after his video, went up to about 45-ish. So luckily that uh, vendor there didn't realize that. And I got that for a really good price. Uh, I believe it was Bad Company that said this was a good game. And I've been looking for it for a while. It's pretty uncommon as well that is still life for the xbox uh exclusive i don't know much about this other than that it's some kind of horror game of some sort um this one even has the registration card in it so that's cool 10 bucks for that one uh you'd be surprised to know that i didn't i was missing one more sports title because it the previous copy i had had the dreaded sun fade so i sold it and got a new one and here's the new one it is uh NBA Inside Drive 2003, complete, and this one actually, I like getting these and then I put them into the official, actual Microsoft game, the little extra pamphlet things. Um, they, I, I assume these only came with the actual Xbox, you know, the Microsoft games, but every once in a while you find them in like a random game. Or actually, this is made by Microsoft Studios, so I guess that, that can stay in there. Now this one is pretty uncommon as well, that's why it's at the end of me picking it up of the end of my exclusive hunt because I've never really seen it until now. The one time we saw it, Nico grabbed it before I could, so he got it. Cold War, uh, $7, exclusive. All these are exclusive, except for the last one. Uh, classified the Sentinel Crisis. So that sounds like a badass title, and it's by Global Star Software. So that's the cover of it. Um, I think this is a game that I'd like to do a review on. It's a shooter. Uh, exclusive to this. It might be on the PC as well, I'm not sure, but console-wise it's exclusive to the Xbox. Um, it actually looks pretty good. It's got the 480p support on it, and so it probably looks pretty good for how old it is. I'd say this is probably an 04 or an 05 game. Now this one, I think this was a TV show at one point in time. This also supports the 480p. This has a beefy manual in it too. Um, oh snap, no way, a GameStop sticker. Oh, wow, this is from... Oh, never mind. It is from PA. Um, so this person initially paid $13.77 at GameStop. 
one eighteen two thousand six. I always I always enjoy finding the GameStop or EB or KB Toy stickers inside games, so I usually keep them in there. Just just they're kind of cool to just keep them. Um, so that is American McGee presents Scrapland, um, also an exclusive, relatively uncommon as well. Paid five bucks for this. And this last one is not exclusive, but it looks to be a really fun game that I really wanted to try. This was made by, I guess, Climax Studios, published by IDOS before Square Enix bought them out. And that is uh, Crash and Burn. This looks pretty sweet. It's, um, from what I can tell, kind of looks like a Burnout clone, but... Um, could be really good. I don't know. I love Burnout. That's pretty much my favorite uh, arcade racer game other than like old Need for Speeds. Uh, so those were all of the Xbox games from Too Many Games. So pretty good stuff there. This is the only one that's not exclusive. However, it came out on the PS2 but not the GameCube. So had it come out on the GameCube, I would have got it for the GameCube. So there's that one. Now the actual meat and potatoes of the heavy hitters that were left on my uh, exclusive list that I was just really waiting to find good deals on. I just, I actually bought all these during CM's, um, CM Retro's last live stream. <laughs> I was just eBay shopping while they were doing their stream. Um, so all these are kind of the last remaining, ex not expensive, but uh, close to MSRP of original Xbox titles. Expensive, meaning... Not the cheap guys, not the middle range guys, but the more expensive kind of guys, but not the super expensive. There's kind of like four tiers of games that I, for Xbox collecting at least, there's like the super expensive, which is like your Outrun Coast to Coast, your Jurassic Park, your Steel Battalion, and then there's these, which are like the expensive, but they're not terribly expensive games. Um, so this is actually relatively uncommon, uh, much like all these. Uh, Procast Sports Fishing by Capcom, exclusive, complete. Um, I don't remember how much I paid for this. I know I got it for a good deal. Definitely uncommon. I think there might be five of these on eBay right now. So I would go ahead and pick this up if I were you. Uh, as After I bought this, I remembered thinking back about the fishing games, which I have for the Dreamcast, and the fishing rod, which I have complete in box as well. I don't think they ever made a fishing reel for the Xbox. I could be wrong, but I don't think they did, which... I kind of wish they did because the Xbox is in a roundabout way kind of a Dreamcast too. But um, yeah, so this one, good game. Or actually, I think some of the reviews did say it's actually a good fishing game. But uh, So this one I found from RetroGamer717 way back months and months and months ago. I didn't even know about its existence. And then I Googled it and sure enough it's an Xbox exclusive. So thank you to you for letting me know that. Not that he knew that, but I looked it up, and sure enough, it was exclusive. Um, this is a... I'm going to retract my previous statement about all these being, like, the mid-tier expensive. This is an expensive game, because this was the last cheap copy on eBay and or Amazon for, like, a good copy. Um, the rest of them are in the triple digits close to the 200 mark. So I don't want to be that guy, because I'm always bitching about people driving up prices. I'm not naming the price that I paid for it, but again... Being that I have a small channel, you're getting like a sneak peek on things that are going to rise in price on the original Xbox because I'm actively collecting for it. So this is definitely a very uncommon title because I didn't even know about its existence until maybe a month or two ago. And that is Bloody Roar Extreme by Hudson. Uh, complete in box, very good shape, amazing shape. Um, I actually really want to get... Uh, an arcade stick for the original Xbox now now that I'm getting more into the fighting I've got quite a few fighting games for the original Xbox and just other things that would benefit from one arcade sticks I really want to get the uh, reflex arcade stick it's actually really cheap and really nice I've used one in a store before way back in the day uh, you can pick them up for about 20 bucks so I'd honestly like to get two so me and Nico could do some some battle and stuff uh, so Bloody Roar Extreme very on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to say this is a solid 7 to an 8 on the rarity scale. This is a black label copy of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, which I'm pretty sure might have been the game that I showed in that RGT85 video. Um, complete in, in box. 
Got this for a good price. This is by no means rare at all. It just stays up there in value, kind of like a Mario Kart or a Zelda or that kind of stuff, just because people want it. Um, I didn't know for the longest time that this was made by Obsidian, which are the makers of Fallout New Vegas, which I absolutely love. Um, I was really surprised, because there were rumors floating that the third game was going to get announced for this, but after Bioware's debauchery of Mass Effect and Andromeda, I believe is what the name is, they're kind of like on the back burner for EA right now, so I don't think they're going to be making any games anytime soon, aside from the Anthem game. And then if that game does bad, EA will probably dump them like a hot potato. But I really would one day love to either see two ports of this, you know, redone in better graphics, or a third one added to the series, or something. Really good game. Um, 40 ish dollar, 20 to 40 ish dollar title if you're lucky. I actually know where this there's a sealed platinum copy, but I don't want a platinum copy, so black label all the way, baby. Now, this one is quickly going up in price as well. Not going to say the price, but uh, another Star Wars title that's Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. Um, awesome looking game. I don't know much about it yet, but obviously, it's some kind of Star Wars game. Got a lot of uh, lightsaber action in it and stuff. Got the 480p. This actually, ooh, this actually has system link on it, so multiplayer system link. That's kind of cool. Um, I'm very excited to give this a shot. I love me some Star Wars. Oh, you know what? This was the game that was in the video. It was uh, Elder Scrolls: Morrowind, the goatee version, black label. This is pretty uncommon. And then to get the complete, complete version with the map, registration cards, all that bullshit, that's where you get into the rare territory for this game. Um, this is pretty, pretty up there in price um, so yeah that one down to the last two this one I think out of all these this is the only one that actually says only on Xbox on the title but all those except for the crash and burn are exclusive to the Xbox um, this is combat task force 121 by Groove Studios uh, there's the back for you this supports 480p it's got the system link this game actually looks graphically very amazing, so this must have been a very late title. This is on the original Unreal Engine. We're on the fourth one right now, so this is the original Unreal Engine, but it still looks pretty good. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited to play that. And this, So it's Groove Studios, but Atari published it. But the Atari that this is is not the same Atari that made the 2600. They're just using the name at this point in time. But there's that one. Now the last one. I've been on the hunt for this game for a very long time because I've truly wanted to play it. They're actually making a, um, not a remake, not a remaster, but they're basically redoing the whole game uh, entirely. It's not the same studio, I don't think, because this was made by Bethesda and then 2K published it. I don't know who's making the new one that's coming out on Xbox and PS4 and PC. Uh, I'll probably end up picking that one up once it's cheap. Uh, the reason I wanted to nab this up now, A, to complete the exclusive set, and B, because with the new one being announced, which I've known about for months anyway, people are going to get excited for that, and then they're going to want, they're going to find the old one, and then they're going to be like, oh, I want that, and then the demand's going to go up, and then the price is going to go up, even though it's already a pretty expensive Xbox title. Um, so this is pretty uncommon. The last time I saw it was 80 bucks at this one game store that I shall not be named that I will never go back to. Nico found it a while ago for 40 and I actually beat that price by a little bit, but 40 is usually the going rate for this. This is already well known to be expensive, so I'm not driving up the prices by saying this. Um, Call of Cthulhu Dark Darkest No, Dark Corners of the Earth. So, this is made by Bethesda, published by 2K. So that must have been before Zenimax bought them out. And yeah, I've been wanting this game for a very long time. It's a cool, like, scary game about Cthulhu, I, I suppose, I would assume. But uh, pretty uncommon game. And that was Too Many Games Pickups and then the eBay Slay Pickups. And let's see if this actually showed us how many Spot Pass people we passed. Could not access SD card during last attempt using Spot Pass. Please check your SD card. Do not... Oh, Jesus Christ. That would be some shit if my SD card fucked up. You're pretty much screwed if your SD card screws up on your 3DS. Okay, there's my me, so we're good. Huh. Only 10? That's weird. 
I really expected that to be a lot more. But yeah, so <clears throat> whatever you guessed, I guessed 44. This was 10. <clears throat> so yeah. And then as far as the contest that I'm doing, the Backlog Summer Challenge 2017, that'll probably be something I do every summer, depending on if people actually get in on this. Bad Company said he's getting in it. MC Mer said he's getting into it. Dan from Apple Gaming Club said he's getting into it. Um, totally drawing a blank on the other people, but I'm pretty sure a few other people said that they were as well. Uh, I encourage everybody to get into it. The prize is a Dreamcast, cables, controller, or a $60 title for any system. Whatever you want, $60 title, mail it to you. Not including the shipping. I'll, I'll, I'll bite the bullet on the shipping. You find a $60 game on eBay, you message it to me, and I'll buy it for you if you win. So you got to pick five games, five different systems that you bought and never actually played, but you intended on playing. So that's the challenge. Whoever does this first is how you win. Now, to get entered into the contest, you need to actually make your video of five games. Then you need to come back to the challenge video. Tell me that you made it. If not, more than likely, I'll just end up seeing it. And then you just need to show you know everybody you beating the boss or you know, a trophy or an achievement that of you beating the boss between June 22nd to August 22nd, or you could live stream it, you could just make videos about it, I don't care how you do it, just do it, and preferably no game genies, no game sharks, none of that bullshit, just be honest about it, and uh, that's going to do it for this week's video, uh, that's the pickups, contest, 10 people on the spot pass, Sega Saturn, stay tuned for the restoration video, that's coming up next, on the next video I'll probably leave a link here maybe not I don't know um, so it'll be kind of a restoration video specifically for Saturn's but you can apply those techniques to other cons oh yeah two player you gotta go down
think you gotta shoot the little flying guy. But it skips it.
So that's this week's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Peace out for now, guys. Till next time. Come here, you mother. I'm mother. Yeah. Uh.